In this video, we're going to be looking at a question from the Maths Leave Insert Paper 2 from 2022. You'll find some timestamps below the video if you want to skip to a specific question. And also, if you want to go to a different question that I'm covering in this video, check out the playlist that you should find a link for in the description below. This is question eight, another one of the large questions, going to be full of things like geometry, trigonometry and areas and volumes. Starts off, tells us a whole story about a lighthouse, which is roughly what this is. We have a cylinder with a hemisphere on top. And first important thing to know from that, and it's important to answer A part one, is what is a hemisphere? A hemisphere is, oh, is half of a sphere. A sphere is a ball. So we're talking half of a ball here. And that's what's sitting on top. And uh, the cylinder is a can. I don't see any glass here, a glass or a can, something like that. Okay, so the first question they ask us to find the volume of the hemisphere. So to do that, uh, we just go to our formula book. Now, a lot of students know these off the off, off, uh, top of their head. But you go to the formula book, go to the correct page, and you'll have a formula for volume of a sphere. Volume of sphere is four over three pi or cubed. And um, yeah, there's no volume for a hemisphere because uh, you just need to know that a hemisphere, in this case, let's uh, say volume of a hemisphere, and we'll say that's a sphere, is equal to a half this four over three pi. And instead of or, we also know the, the radius of this. I, I never mentioned that, sorry. Uh, down here is three. Well, that means up here is also three. Um, because a cylinder is equal on the bottom and the top. So that means we now know the radius uh, or cubed, so three cubed. Put all this into a calculator, or we can do it in our head, I hope. Um, four goes into two, uh, two times. So we're left with, um, well, three then goes into one of these trees. So there's three of those trees, now there's two of them. So what are we left with here? We're left with a two times three times three, which is three times three is nine, times two is 18, and a pi left over. And the question asked us to leave pi left over. Don't worry if you can't do that so quick. Um, actually, I don't even recommend you try to do it as quick as that. Do it a little slower, work it out, and hopefully you get the same answer. And again, a calculator should give you the same answer. And the calculator should leave pi in at the end if you, if you use it correctly. Okay, part two, A part two, then asks us the, or it tells us the volume of this cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is 36 pi. Uh, yeah, and work out what is the height. So again, for that, we go to our formula book, and we have a volume for a, a cylinder right there. And that is, oh yeah, of course, it's a circle multiplied by the height. So it's a pi or squared multiplied by the height. And in this case, uh, in this case, that's equal to 36 pi. Because they told us, they told us the volume is 36 pi. That's the, formu the formula for the volume. And that's the actual answer. So we can do a few things there. First of all, pi cancels with pi. We don't need them. Uh, or we know is three, three times three. So that's nine. Nine H is equal to 36. So what's, what is H? Nine multiplied by what is 36? So the answer is four, but another way to do that is H. Divide both sides by nine. H is equal to 36 divided by nine, which is equal to four. So that's the answer for that. Let me rub this out and we'll do part B. Okay, for part B, they continue to talk about the lighthouse and they say the bottom of the lighthouse is built on some sort of shape like this, a cone with the top cut off. And um, to start us off, they ask us simply, what's this angle A? Okay, so though, sometimes don't get too confused by the whole shape, the whole question. They're gonna try and help you out by asking you things in order. And so, first of all, they just ask us, what is this angle A? Um, to do that, forget about the cone, forget about the three dimensions. I want you to just think of this as two dimensional. Look in at the side 
And if we look at this uh, cone from the side, we'll be able to get this shape here. Um, a right angle triangle. If I draw a line down the middle, this will be length uh, 7.5. The height of it will be this height here, um, 47. And they'll be asking about this angle here, A. That's we can simplify this three-dimensional shape into this question, a sort of question we've seen all the time. It's a right angle triangle. When you're dealing with right angle triangles, you should straight away think of sine, um, cosine, and tangent. And uh, different people have different nonomics to, I don't think that's the correct word, different ways to remember these. Mine is O L O over A. Another R, A over H, of algebra, O over A. And we ask ourselves, which of these formulas do we need? In this case, we have an angle, they all have angles. We have an opposite, so uh, this guy doesn't have an opposite. And we have an adjacent, so we need an angle, an opposite, and an adjacent. Um, that one doesn't have that, so an angle, an opposite, and an adjacent, tangent. So we can use tangent to find this answer. So the tangent of A is equal to 47 divided by 7.5. You can put this in a calculator, but it won't come out even. So I like to just leave it for now. We need to get rid of this tan. We want A equals. They asked us uh, to find out what A is to the nearest angle. So how do we get rid of tan? Um, when it's multiply, we divide. When it's add, we take away. When it's tan, I'll do this slowly here. Usually I move things quickly wherever I did it earlier. So tan of A, to get rid of a tan, we get the inverse of a tan. And uh, we can't just invent things, put things wherever we want it, unless we're fair to both sides. So if I got the inverse tan on the left, inverse on the right. So this is the identical. This, these are identical, except I've added in this inverse tan. I've done it to both sides. I've been equal to both sides. Except the great thing on the left is, it destroys the tan, and all we're left with is A. On the right side, this is all in the calculator. You can put this in a calculator. My calculator, it's a shift tangent uh, 47 divided by 7.5, close the bracket that was opened by the tangent. And if you put all that into the calculator, uh, you get um, you get an angle of 80.933 something 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 but they ask us correct to the nearest degree so all the matters is the nearest degree this zero and I look at the next number as well so it's 0 0.9 well that's is it closer to 81 or 80 so it's closer to 81 there we go. So that's the answer to B part one. Okay, B part two, they ask us to find K basically of this uh, shape here. And uh, there's two ways I can think of doing this question. Um, which one will I show you? I'll show you both of them. Uh, I'm just thinking which one will I show you first. Um, I, I don't think I had to rub out what I did because the first thing I would show you, let's use this picture here. Uh, this angle, we know this angle, you know, let's draw it again up here. Again, we're looking at the side here. I know this angle is 81. I'm sorry if that's hard to see. Uh, let's see, I know this, if we put a line down the middle, I know this is 3 here. I know this is 7.5. Again, if I make up another line here, I make this triangle over here. Okay, this is 3, this is 7.5, what's left is 4.5. I'm sorry, I've made this a bit small, it's probably hard to see. I'm going to make it a bit bigger now in a moment. If that's 81, well this angle in here must be 9. And this is the height we're looking for, uh, what's it called, K. Let's just rotate this triangle down and make it a little bigger so we can see it. So I'm just twisting this and putting it down, this angle 9 still 9. This k, still k here. 4.5, 4.5. Just so we can uh, a bit easier see. And this is a right angle. This is a right angle. It's just like the last question. We have an angle, we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, and we're looking for k. So we use tangent again. The tan of 9 
is equal to 4.5 divided by k. Let's rearrange this to get k on its own. Uh, multiply both sides by k. We will get a k on the left. Uh, tan 9 is equal to 4.5. Divide both sides by tan 9. We will get k is equal 4.5 divided by tan of 9. And we can go ahead and put that into a calculator. Um, and I get 28.5. I'm not sure if that's exact. I, I, I'm guessing I've rounded off there. Okay, that's one way to do this question. Let me, um, let me rub out over here. I'll, I'll leave this picture. Let me rub out over here and I'll show you another way. It's probably a little easier. Okay, after rubbing that out, I've, I've just put a little top on here because I sort of do want the shape and I want the total height um, as 47. Okay, so I'm gonna use the idea of similar triangles. Again, forget the three dimension, we're gonna make a two dimensional shape. Well, let's make one big one. I'm gonna, again, put a little line down the middle and I'm gonna use the whole height, 47. The whole length down here was uh, 7.5, 7.5, and we found this angle to be, what was it, 80, 89, 80, 81. Okay, that's one triangle. And then we're gonna look at this small triangle up here. I'll draw it here. That's the length down here is three. This is a right angle, a right angle. The height of this, we just found it out, didn't we? Um, no, we don't know it, so we'll say it's X. Sorry, we did find it out. Well, we used something to help. Does it, we don't know it. We'll pretend this is in here. Uh, X, and this angle in here, this is the important thing. This angle is the same. Has to be the same, 81. These are similar triangles. We don't need to do any trigonometry or anything like this. Uh, the ratio between this number and this number will be the same as this and this one. They're, the triangles all have the same angles and their lengths, if, if their length is twice as big here, it has to be twice as big here. If it's three times as big, it has to be three times as big here. So how much bigger is it? Uh, 7.5 divided by three. Well, that has to equal 47 divided by x, or I guess I could have done that any which way. Three divided by, yeah, let's, uh, let's try that again with, you could, what I did was fine, it's just, it's a bit of maybe a silly way. Let's leave x on top. x divided by three has to equal 47 divided by 7.5. And that's true for all similar triangles. Whatever this length here is, divided by this length will also equal. And um, so just three, we have to move. Three multiplied by both sides, we get x is equal to three times 47 divided by 7.5, and that equals, remember this is two ways to do the same question. The answer we got here was 28.4. So you'd expect the same, but you don't. You get 28.2. And uh, this is correct, this is actually correct. This one is good enough, you'll get full marks in your exam. The reason this wasn't fully correct, the nine, we rounded off. That, was, that, that was number wasn't 81, it was 80 point uh, something something. So we rounded off, that's made our answer a little off. And this one we didn't round anywhere. I, or maybe I did at the end, I, I'd have to check in the calculator. Either way, this one is more correct. They're both gonna get you full marks. Okay, let me rub this out and we'll move on to part C. Okay, in part C, uh, they tell us that the lighthouse is in the center of a circle of 50 kilometers. So let's just draw that. Here's the lighthouse and here's the circle around it. And this is 50 kilometers. And they ask us to work out the area of the circle within, you know, it gets a, the, word, the language you use is a little confusing, but basically work out the circle. Work out the area of this circle. And so that's simply pi r squared. And we know what, uh, so a is equal to this. Uh, we know um, r is 50. So 50 squared times pi. They don't tell us to leave our answer with pi in it. So you put pi in your calculator, times 50 times 50. 
and you get it to the nearest um, the nearest kilometer squared which comes out seven eight five four I'm, I'm not sure the exact number I rounded it off when I did it okay and that's that's C part one let's skip on to part two that, that one shouldn't be too difficult they tell you it's a circle they give you the radius and they ask you to find the area Honestly, I think the English is the hardest part there. So if English is not your first language, that's probably a harder question. But otherwise, it's just asking you the area of a circle. Okay, part two. A strangely small question this, but it's probably easy if you can do it, hard if you can't, as with all questions. They tell you 50 kilometers is equal to 27 nautical miles. Uh, I don't know how to write that. NM, I'm going to write. Uh, find out what one nau nautical mile is equal to in kilometers. So how many kilometers is here? This is how I like to do these. This question will come up two, three, four times in every leave insert. Make sure you can do it. Convert from one unit to another. This is how I like to do it. Yeah, you might see different ways in the books. So um, 50 goes to 27. How do I get 27 to one? I always change something to one. That's easy enough. Divide by 27, we'll get from here to here. That means whatever gets from here to the answer here must also be divided by 27. So the answer here is simply 50 divided by 27. And you go ahead, put that in your calculator. They asked for four significant uh, figures. Uh, what did I get? Um, 1.5. Yeah, that, okay, I, I think this is right, uh, 1.852. If that's not correct, I'll edit it out and you'll never see this moment. So, uh, 1.82. Okay, for part D, they set up uh, this quite realistic looking question. And um, the lighthouse is here, I won't bother drawing that. The lighthouse is 49 meters above the ground. There's a ship over here this point and it's looking at the lighthouse and this is how they, they would have done it back 100 years ago or whatever they would get a, a machine a sextant and they'd work this angle out they'd look at the light and say oh it's 1.2 degrees and they'd look up their chart and they'd say well i know the lighthouse is 49 meters tall so how far away are we so that's what they're asking us to work out here and um, what we have is a right angle triangle okay, so again we have an, an angle we have the opposite and we're looking for the adjacent. So once again, we use the tangent. The tangent of 1.2 is equal to 49 divided by D. Uh, you'll mostly be using the tangent in real world questions because we, we usually know the height of things and the distance. We very rarely know the length. This is like in air. The length, I guess nowadays with lasers, um, you could probably measure the, with a laser pointer, you can measure this length easily enough. But most real world questions, you won't know that number. Um, okay, so just find D. So let's multiply both sides by D. We get a D over here. Tan 1.2 is equal to 49. Divide both sides by this number. Uh, D is equal 49 divided by tan 1.2. Uh, put that into a calculator and we get D is equal to let's see we get 2339.24 one last trick they asked us for the distance in kilometers we put in meters that's 49 meters high so this is actually not the correct answer uh, we need uh, in kilometers so in kilometers D is equal to 2.33924. And again, they asked us to the nearest two decimal places. So this number here is important, and we look at the one after it. So is this closer to 30 or 40? Well, it's closer to 40. So D is equal to 2.34 kilometers. I'm sorry, kilometers, there you go. Okay, that answers another one of those long questions. If you have any questions for A, B, C, or D, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Otherwise, have a great day and see you next time.